Ladies and Madam New York, we've got Gary Dordan playing his keys. Check him out. At least you didn't say playing my organ or something. <laughs> <laughs> folks. <laughs> That's your sneak peek. Check them out on Twitter at Gary Dordan. Is she hot? Thank you. Hey everyone, it's Victoria Adele here with Gary Dordan for MadamNoir.com. How are you today? Fantastic. How are you doing? Doing wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting us and speaking with us. Thanks for coming. So give us a little background. Where are you from? You know, how you got in the acting business, and, and you don't have to tell all the goodies because those questions are coming later. I see. Yeah. Well, it was all a fluke, I think. I'm from Philadelphia. I was born and raised in Philadelphia and South Jersey, and I spent uh, about 20 years in New York, in Brooklyn, and I moved my way out here to California about 10 or so years ago. Uh, I think what moved me out here was a different world. It was my first TV job. Before that, I was just doing uh, music videos and playing in bands back in New York, in musical theater, doing theater back in New York. And I, I started in this place uh, called Freedom Theater in Philadelphia. It was a theater and arts program that's still going on, actually, now. So check it out if you're in Philly, Freedom Theater. Put your kids in it. It works. So you always end up in roles with these hot leading ladies how does that happen i wish it would happen more i mean is that a problem you know people think it's it's an easy thing to to have love scenes and to be intimate in front of the camera or because it's a hot leading lady but it's really really hard work it's very hard work because you have 20 people in a room just watching you go, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hug up next to somebody and they're just sitting there with their crew drinking coffee, eating donuts in front of you. It's not easy. It has to be a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. Okay. But it helps if you have good chemistry. Okay. And, and Janet, good chemistry? Absolutely. She's beautiful. And beautiful is spirit inside and out. But her boyfriend was directing, so that kind of made things a little... Ooh. But I think they had a little freaky thing going on. He was like, put your hand here. I was like, yo, she's <laughs> a freak. Look at you. We had a fun time. <laughs> well, in your current um, production that's about to come out, Jumping the Broom. Well, we had so much love on that set. It was such a great time that we had up there. We were all stuffed up in some part of Canada, like, you know, I can't remember the name of the, the part of Canada, but it was just us, <laughs> you know. It was a beautiful time, though. We all sat around and ate dinner and talked about our hopes and our dreams going forward. And it was such a good good vibration on that set and I hope to have work with those people again some of them again Angela Bassett's awesome you know we had Angela Bassett we had uh, Megan Good we had so many gorgeous women on the set and me and Laz, Laz Alonzo were sitting around talking watching all these gorgeous women pass by and we were like who's the dime here who's the ten and it, it turned out to be Angela Bassett every time she just has great bone structure and she's just a she's just a honey you know so sorry Courtney <laughs> so um, I was doing another job in, in France at the time and they called me and they were like, Gary, you know, we want you to play the chef role. And I was like, well, that's great because I was a chef coming out of high school. So it was not a, a stretch for me to do. And so that was another question. You're a chef. It looks like you're, I don't know, fishing for oysters. Is that the wrong terminology? Yeah, I think it was uh, mussels or something like that. Mussels. Yeah. Okay, great. So you already knew how to do all this. Well, not fishing for mussels. I'm not a seafood chef, but I did work at Red Lobster when I came out of high school. So you can throw down in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah I can get that. That's always attractive. You know, men are always wanting women to cook, but when a man can cook, it's women like... Women really love when men can cook. Let's be serious. Come on. Oh, you can cook. Oh, really? That changes things. So give us a little more insight about your character. Well, he... My character is a chef who ends up seducing one of the bridesmaids, played by Making Good. And that was hard. And um, what was the hard part about it? Seducing no, her, I'm being, or I'm being sarcastic. That was the easiest job I've ever had, actually. Megan Good and I had met years ago, probably at a industry party or something like that. And she's so attractive, she's so cool at the same time, and she has a band as well. That she's so we had a lot to talk about, and it was good to finally work together. There's so many instruments in here. I didn't know you were a musician. And yeah, you know, I played music in New York for many years before I actually became an actor. And something had to give. Yeah. You know, we were starving in New York, eating spam out of cans, trying to make a living. And I got a job on a TV show, and that changed a lot of things. 
It changed a lot of things, and so now I think I would like to shed light on your music career. Tell me, you're doing a lot of international performances, you have a band you've been with since 94. Yeah, we had a band in New York called the Bell Cafe because we played at a place called the Bell Cafe every Sunday. And it was sort of like a, um, an acid jazz funk rock thing that we had going on. We had a lot of people sit in. And uh, I think Guru came by and sat in one night, and just different uh, rappers and different musicians came. Uh, the guitarist for The Roots actually played with the Bell Cafe for many years. And we had a lot of great guests come in, and I used to do poetry, and I used to play guitar for the band. And we stayed together for about eight or nine years. And then we all broke off and did our different things, and one of the things that I went to do was a different world. What instruments do you play? I play uh, guitar, I play keyboards, bass, whatever the track needs. <laughs> Give us five things that people might not know about you. Five things that people might not know about me. Let's see, we can go back into the time warp capsule. They probably didn't know that I was in the Eric B. and Rakim's video, Move the Crowd. That was my first time on film. Fab Five Freddy gave me my first shot on film. So if you look back in that video, you might just catch my face. <laughs> and um, people don't know, obviously, a lot of people in America don't know that I, that I play music, that I've been recording under pseudonyms for a while, so they might catch me. You can go to Temple of Thoughts. I'm going to plug myself right now. It's a <laughs> selfless plug. Templeofthoughtsmusic.com and, and download some of the things that we're working on right now. And what else? Five things. <laughs> It could get kind of secretive, trying to get through the flow. You know, I come from the school of save your privacy because the tabloids <laughs> will trash you. You have a lot going for your look. How has that affected your your the roles that you get casted in? Well, or how has it hindered them as well? At first, it, you know, it, it, it seemed like a hindrance because you know I, I came into the game and I had locks, so a lot of people a lot of people would say, "How do you even work with with locks in this game?" And after a while, times change. People start, as I said, looking for non-traditional roles or non-traditional casting to fill roles. So it, it got to be about how many roles I was getting because of my look instead of how many roles I wasn't getting. And I've worked with people like uh, Terrence Howard. We have a similar, mm -hmm. you know, makeup, you know, light eyes and, you know, and, and, and uh, brown skin. So we talked a lot. We did this film called King Dog where he played Ali and I played Malcolm X. And we talked a lot when we were working about the, the needing, needing to open up the game a little bit for actors and actresses because we have so many different shades going on, you know. And a lot of times if it's a project that's, you know, very linear, they'll just look for actors who look like the next Angel Washington. That's what they'll be trying to f fulfill, you know. Mm -hmm. And all the ladies want to know your relationship status. Are you single? Yeah, I am happily single, actually. I'm, I'm just um, working now. That's what it is. Yeah, working. You know, I, I like to have a lot of play time, and as I said, I was out of the country th for two years, so that, that, that gave me, I guess, a lot of that. But um, now it's just been about really trying to just keep my butt in the studio and get some work done. But I, I, do, uh, I do have my, my moments of play time that I need. You know, we, we can't all just work. It would make Jack a dull boy. <laughs> you have two lovely kids. Yeah. How's fatherhood? Fatherhood is awesome. Uh, what do you like so much about it? What's the best part of my father? They're my best friends. We have such a great time, you know, whatever we're doing. And we have a fantastic playground around my neighborhood. And my friends have kids the same age, so we're having a great time. You know, just doing kung fu with each other, riding skateboards, or riding bikes. We're having a great time right now. They keep you young? They keep me young. And my daughter's keeping me straight because she's so fashionable. Between her and my niece, I'm just, I know what to check out. Dad, it sucks. What are you trying to dress me in? So I'm, I'm getting hip. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. You really gave us a lot of insight of what you have currently and just your past. And um, we definitely look forward to seeing a whole lot more of you in the future. All right. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Victoria. You too. Cheers. <laughs> hey, this is Gary Dodon. You're watching me on Madame Noir. Follow me on Twitter at Gary Dodon.